Okay, so today I'll be launching uh, the Patriot mis uh, well, missile model as a two-stage rocket. I've never done two stages before in my life, not factory or otherwise. So I'm gonna try this out. I didn't do any research on how they normally uh, ignite the second stage um, on the commercially produced two-stage rocket models. I said to heck with it, I'm gonna figure it out on my own. That's what I wanted to do it. I don't know if it's right, but that's what I'm going to do. Um, I have used open rocket and I have calculated uh, carefully uh, where the center of gravity is, center of pressure. I've got about 1.6 inches between the center of gravity and the center of pressure. It's a little bit closer than I'd like. I'd like to have a little more separation there, a little more room for boo-boo and errors and whatnot. Uh, what I've done to try to get that distance a little bit more, it was 1.3 inches, uh, is I've actually cut a hole in the nose cone here. So the altimeter, which only weighs like five and a half grams or something like that, will be able to pass up inside there and then I'll use a piece of tissue wadding to hold that into place. What I've done for igniting my uh, second stage from the booster is, and unfortunately both of those are in the uh, dryer right now, um, I just pressed them about an hour ago, so it's going to take a minute for them to, to dry, so I want to let them continue to dry because I'm going to go and launch this thing in about an hour and a half or so, uh, is I took, this is uh, fast visco, visco is like, uh, used to be, we used to call it Canon Fuse, it's probably like Kleenex, there was probably a brand, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Um, in the pyro world, it's just simply visco. This is fast visco. This stuff on the package is labeled as burning at one foot in 0.1 to 0.4 seconds. That's right quick. Uh, because of my testing uh, with flying sticks that were had weights on them to simulate the, uh, the weight of what this entire rig uh, is going to be at launch, both motors and everything, uh, it's not going fast. When it, uh, when it runs out of juice on the, uh, on the motor. So I don't really want to delay. I want this thing to hit that second stage quick. I don't want this thing to have any opportunity to slow down, uh, lose momentum and begin to arc over and then have the second stage hit and go. Now this is all a little bit sketchy because obviously the ejection charge for the parachute is going to be on the second stage, which is going to be over here. Uh, I've got this uh, here on the bench. This is a uh, uh, new, model. When I bought the Patriot model, I bought three of them because I knew I might crash one. If, if you've watched one video, the second video where I launched it, it went up and never came down under chute. It came down like a lawn dart and destroyed the front end of the, uh, the rocket. I was able to salvage from the uh, body seam back the tail section. So this is the one that's been flown twice. And then I had to replace the motor mount tube, the motor, the motor mount tube, uh, and a little hook all rode into the nose cone on the one that crashed. So I have constructed a new one, notice that there's no paint on it, and replaced that. And that's what gave me the idea to make a second stage. My son and I were talking about that, like, let's do make a two stage. So what the heck? So that's what this is. Um, if, you, if you wanted to, you could uh, just buy two of them and do that from the beginning. Uh, these motors are the ones that, I'm, that I'll be using, not the exact ones. These are ones that I've burn tested. Uh, they're five inches long, much longer than the factory uh, Estes motors. And like I showed in the very first video, just in case you're wondering if I'm making things up, they do actually, come on baby, almost there, fit. Okay, close enough. All right, so then um, same thing on this one here. This one's a little bit better fitting tube. I had to make both of those tubes from scratch. So uh, the first one is not... Uh, that, that replacement one is not ideal, obviously, but it works. And then what I'm going to try to do to light that second stage is uh, on top of the booster stage, I have just a very thin uh, clay cap plug uh, that I've pressed, and then I drilled a very small pacifier hole through it. And then I'm going to put uh, some small granulated black powder in there and then some very coarse granulated black powder, just enough to get down in the hole, make sure that fire comes up through there. I'll use like some basically some granulated meal dust. I mean, it's little bitty fine stuff. It's probably going to be under, it's certainly under 30 and maybe under 50 mesh. And what I did is, uh, and then I'll, then I'll put that in. I'll use my core burner tooling. I'll pass this fuse up through the core burner tooling. And I actually have a, this is not the tooling that I use, but I happen to have this over here handy. So I'll grab one of these. Da, 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 there, that one right there. So what I'll do, this, this is a, a wooden piece that I made. This is very similar to my stainless steel uh, tools that I use on the press. And I'll be able to shove this all the way up inside there like that. So I'll put this down inside of the motor, on the top of the motor, put the black powder that I want in there, and then put the clay on top of it, the kitty litter. And then I'll put this down like so, and be able to press, 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 and then 
pull that out and leave this embedded in the top of my booster stage. Uh, what I've done here is I've taken some, let me get my hands cleared up here. This is, uh, this is globbed up with some nitrocellulose lacquer that has uh, some black powder in it. Let's see if that, and a little bit of aluminum powder in that nitrocellulose lacquer. This is the same composition that I use on my electric igniters, um, which works extremely well. And then I, once I was done, I dipped it in a little bit of uh, fine granulated in 20 to 30 mesh black powder to be darn sure that it takes fire. And then just because I could, I put another layer of nitrocellulose lacquer on it and another dipping of, of black powder. It's gonna like that visco, it, it's gonna. Anyway, so like I said, I'll embed that in the top of the booster stage. So it'll come out just like that. And then when I put the two stages together, I'll slide this up inside of here, inside of that nozzle, and it's gonna go only so far, and then it's gonna bottom out. And then what I'll do is I'll compress it, and that's gonna cause that visco to bend and flex. And that's gonna take out the slop. That should, that should account for having enough distance here that I can see what I'm doing, bringing that second stage in so I can make contact with that tube sticking out of the, the booster stage, slide that in, and then manhandle that sucker up there and it should curl and bow and generally fill in. And the other thing that I'm going to do, because this burns so quickly, it may not ignite the fuel grain on the, on the uh, second stage. I'm going to put a itty bitty little bit of super fine uh, granulated like that meal dust powder inside the motor nozzle. I mean like a pinch, not enough to block up the core uh, and certainly not enough to fill it. And then I'll put this in after it to be sure, uh, as sure as I can be, that the uh, fuse will ignite that fuel grain on the uh, second stage. Like I said, this stuff burns so quickly, 0.1 seconds to 0.4 seconds for a foot. This is gonna burn in not even tenths of a second, in hundredths of a second. That fire may be here and gone so fast that it doesn't ignite that fuel grain, and I really don't want that to happen. I don't want to have another failure. Um, I'd really like to nail this on the first try. Anyway, so there is, that's what's going on with that. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's relevant or important to mention at this point. That's how I'm going to do my pass fire from the booster stage to the second stage. Um, I did do this. Uh, Open Rocket estimates if my boost uh, and thrust calculations are accurate, which they're probably not, uh, estimates this thing's gonna hit 1300 uh, feet. So what I've done, uh, because I, cause I, I'm, I'm not putting my little parachute release device in here again, That's, that, that was, I think, part of why the parachute didn't get ejected on the one where this one poked a hole in the ground was because there was so much stuff in there. Uh, my, my homemade uh, uh, wadding was too stiff. I used a paper towel, that was a mistake. Uh, uh, a guy who's been giving me a lot of help online had suggested you know, wadding it up after, afterwards, of course. Wadding it up to soften it up. I wished I'd done that, I hadn't done that. And then I also had that parachute release device. So it was just too much junk for this thing to try to eject with the ejection charge that I had. I'm just not gonna do that. So in order to, to not have to chase this thing for a half a mile, I knocked a hole, also his suggestion, also, uh, I knocked a hole out of the top of this thing. So this thing is gonna come down a little bit faster. Hopefully we'll be able to find that fairly quickly. I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else to do other than go out and light this candle and see what, uh, see what happens. So we'll uh, hear it about an hour, hour and a half, something like that, go out to the ranch and hopefully not destroy another model. But hey, I've got a third one. And if I blow another one, if I created the front of this one, I'm gonna put the third one together. And I'm gonna make it a three stage because I'm not gonna learn. I am gonna keep persisting. I will finish this some way. And I'll launch that sucker with a core burner for the first stage. I'm gonna tell you, these motors are not bad, but that's 199.7 grams of load trying to lift from an in burning rocket. That's a fair amount of uh, load. There's no way this thing's gonna get three stages off the ground. So it's gonna have to go to a core burner. But by golly, one way or another, I'm gonna fly a multi-stage rocket and recover it successfully. See you on the other side. All right, and here we are with the uh, the rocket on the launch pad. Uh, I've taped on some marking ribbon to the uh, boost section there. It's only about uh, two and a half, three feet of it. Uh, to one, help move the uh, center of pressure a little bit further rearward, get a little more drag on the end of it to uh, keep it pointing the right direction just in case there's a CPCG problem. And 
uh, I had to tape the two sections together. They're fairly loose. Under thrust, it won't be a problem, but tr for transport, it will be. So that'll be a remove before flight. Uh, it's a little bit windier than I'd like, but we're going to do this anyway. So we're going to hook up the igniter and stand back and launch. Okay, yell out a countdown so Mommy can hear you too. What the hell? Um, I don't see the back end. Houston? I didn't see where the top, yeah, Houston, we got a problem. I didn't see where the top end went. Yeah, I didn't see where the back end went. 